Welcome to Consciousness Unfiltered. Get ready for a very different, vulnerable, and uncensored conversation with Dr. Anthony Mattis and his amazing guests. They'll be sharing the powerful tools of access consciousness that have helped thousands of people all over the world to create change in every area of their lives. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Consciousness Unfiltered. I am Dr. Anthony Mattis, and I'll be using the tools of access consciousness. And the topic of today is image versus persona. So this is something that uh, Dr. Dane here, the co-creator of Access Consciousness and uh, founder Gary Douglas have been sort of like hitting home real hard lately where we basically trying to get us to look at where we look, where we actually function from image in all areas of our life as a parent, um, as a business owner, as an employee, you know, as a, as a son, you know, as a husband, a wife, a daughter, a friend. Okay. And, and it's like, if you go through, I'm 52, I'm going to be 52 years old. I'm rounding up. Oh my goodness. Pun and pock me, pun and pock me. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I'm going to be 52 years old. And, and so when this conversation came up, I, I, it was easy for me to look at, you know, in my younger years where I was doing image a lot in different ways, because I thought that's what you had to do and be to survive and thrive in this world. Um, that if you can sort of create an image and have it something that everybody desires and wants, well, then you're a success. And so, you know, I found out that that wasn't true for a number of reasons. The main reason is you're not being you. You're just simply not being you because when you function from image, you're functioning from an idea, an idea that you've decided or maybe a group of people decided is valuable, a valuable product. Whether it's you're a great athlete, a great you know, entertainer, or performer. I mean, you see this all the time with professional athletes and entertainers. You know, we see the image of what they portray to the public, but is that actually who they are or is that just what's made them a lot of money? You know, who are they behind closed doors? What are they behind closed doors? And you see a lot of them committing suicide because, you know, for all sorts of reasons, and I could list a gazillion of them, and it's very easy to chalk it up to mental illness. But it's like, what if you've fulfilled the best of what this reality has to offer, which is image, which is material wealth, right? Which is power. And in some cases, power over others. And so I found out for me personally that none of that brought me joy. Not, none of that brought me joy. So somewhere deep down inside, I always felt alone. I, I always felt like a misfit, so to speak, because inside, I really just wanted to be me. And I remember even my relationships with, with I'm not even going to talk about women, okay? But as a straight man, right, who prefers the opposite sex um, to copulate with <laughs> or to have relationships with or creationship, um, well, basically, it's the sex. Let's just say how it is. Um, you know, it's... I fucking lost my train of thought because I was trying to be a funny guy. You know, oh, I'm not going to talk about this, the relationship part with, with, with women, but it was like with men. I remember with men, like my point of view with, if you're going to be in a relationship with anybody on any level, even if it's a friendship, like two guys just hanging out, um... I was always considered like a very deep and intense guy, right? And I'm one of those people that wears his heart on the sleeve. You know exactly how I'm feeling. I don't hold anything back. I'm probably one of the most vulnerable people you'll ever meet in your life. Um, I, I, I actually suck at doing image, basically, okay? I'm not the guy at a uh, business after hours party that goes up to everybody and be like, hey, Johnny, how you doing? That's not me. Because I always thought that was fake. But people who do image really, really, really well are great at that. 
They're great at that. And it's not a wrongness. It's, it's actually a capacity. It's awesome. I just suck at it. Because for me, I always had this point of view that if I can't be real, if I can't be me, well, then I'm fake. So I struggled with image. And with someone who, you know, enjoys the company of male companions, like to do guy things, you know, whatever that is. Um, I was too intense for a lot of guys. I was too deep, too vulnerable. And what that created in other men's world is it all well, just made them uncomfortable. It made them want to sort of like push me away. I became sort of like the butt of their jokes, no pun intended, because I was so vulnerable and open. And I think a lot of it made them uncomfortable. So, so uncomfortable that that maybe somewhere in their mind, like, oh, wow, if I really let this guy into my universe, then it must mean I'm gay because two straight men can't have this type of vulnerability together. And so, but my point of view was always like, what's the point of living if you can't be real? Like, what's, what's the point of have, be, having this existence, having this embodiment, if you can't keep it real? <laughs> I mean, it's exhausting trying to maintain an image. It's exhausting keeping things, to me, on the surface. Now, that's not for everybody, and that's fine. I get it. I get it. It took me a long fucking time to figure that out. I had to actually bend, fold, and mutilate myself to fit in everybody else's world. Because I'm not going to say the majority globally on the planet, because that, I know that that's not true, because I've been able to travel around the world with my business, and I've met amazing, amazing people who love to have deep, intimate, connections you know and and um encounters straight men do which is great but when you know when you're growing up along the way as a teenager and stuff you're sort of just subject to your particular community your particular high school you know the schools that you go to right you know so you're sort of like in this little pond of where you are and and people like us are few and far between but when then when you work in the whole world, I mean, percentage wise, we're still definitely in the minority. So anyway, so let's go back to this image and persona thing. And then just forget about like relationships with women. Women will be like, oh, I love a guy like that. I love a guy like that. But then when they finally have that kind of guy, they can't receive him. They can't receive a guy like that because once again, it's too deep, too intense. <laughs> so anyway. So image versus persona. But let's think about that for a minute. If you're aware of what people think about you and you happen to be a really super, like, let's say, psychic person or a sensitive person or just a very aware person, how much pressure are you going to have when you could actually perceive their projections and expectations of you? You constantly have that noise going on in the background all the time. And if you're not in like interesting point of view, they have that point of view about me, you're going to be at the effect of it. You will be at the effect of it, especially for those of you who are super sensitive, super psychic, super aware. If you're one of those people that walks into a crowded room and you know the vibe of it immediately, you're, su you're one of those people, okay? So here you are, people project an image at you, and it could just be your family. Let's say they're something simple like, you know, well, she's good at math. He's good at math. So they project at you that you should be good at math and you should be an accountant someday or whatever professions, um, you know, require, you know, a high aptitude in mathematics. Okay. But those are projections and expectations. And when you're super sensitive and super aware, you're aware of that, right? So it's like this image that you're always aware of that people are projecting at you. You're also aware of where they reject it to. You see, but when you're doing persona, when you're doing persona, it doesn't matter what people project at you. It doesn't matter what people expect of you. It doesn't matter even if they're rejecting you or revering you. Why? Because persona is you being you. Okay? Naked and all. It's you being you, the good, the bad, and the ugly with no point of view. Like zero. 
And so what would that create if you started functioning from that space of persona rather than image? How would your body feel? Do you think you might have ease, less tension in your shoulders or less tension in your solar plexus or wherever you feel your body contract when you know you're not being you? Or where you feel those places where you feel your body contract when you're aware of people projecting, expecting, separating from you, rejecting you, judging you for the good or for the bad. Okay. Where do you feel that in your body? When you're doing image, it actually destroys, it limits what you're capable of being and doing in the world. See, but persona is being, and, and, and it's not going to feel like anything. Why is it not going to feel like anything? Because you're, because you're just being. Being doesn't feel like anything. You're just being. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you're being you. And it's funny because a lot of times our capacities and gifts and talents sort of kind of get lost in that realm because we're like, we don't look at the things that we can do easily and the things that are super fun for us as us being us or a way to make money, for example. How could you make money being you? Don't you have to put on a different cap? <laughs> right? You say, hey, now it's time to put your thinking cap on or now it's time to put your mathematics hat on or now it's time to put your psychology hat on. It's like image, 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 image. Now it's time to put on your actor hat on or, you know, professional athlete hat on for the media, for the people. So it's like, what is you maintaining your image actually creating for you? Does it create joy? Does it create ease? Now, some of you will feel like you're going to die. If you let go of your image, some of you are making livings and careers out of, an, out of your image. And if it's working for you, great. If it's working for you, great. But are you able to, when you go home to be with your family, let that image go? Or do you try to maintain that image even for your family? That can't be fun for them. You know, little kids if their parents happen to be superstars, they just see them as mom and dad. It's not until they become like teenagers and stuff like that, where things start hitting them like, oh shit, wow, dad's a celebrity. Mom's a celebrity. That's kind of weird. So it's like, who is my dad? Is my dad what the public is portraying him to be? The media portraying him to be? I just know him as my dad. He farts. And his farts smell like everybody else. The public don't know that. <laughs> image versus persona. What's the value of holding on to your image? Does it actually create greater? And what if you can function from the space of persona, which is your being, you being you? regardless of the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections that you're aware of, because you're being you creating your life. What space would that create in your body? What space would that create in your universe? And what else is possible with regards to your creationships with your children, your lover, your friends, your business associates? This world is starving for authenticity, for people being you, for you being you. Our world has had enough of these images that we see on TV and social media. My son's, oh my God, again, don't even get me going on that. All this TikTok crap and all these pretty boys just posing, doing all these little like annoying poses and stuff because they know that they're so pretty. I mean, this is what these guys, you guys do all day? I mean, seriously, don't you have anything else better to do? That shit don't last anyway. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. 
because it's not going to be there 30 years from now, 25 years from now, when you're in your 40s and 50s and half of you go bald. <laughs> it's like, why don't you, instead of spending all your time making yourself look pretty, see how many likes you can get. Why don't you actually spend some time working on your persona instead of your image? Our world has had enough image. We're destroying our planet. We're destroying each other because we're all too busy maintaining this false reality, this false image, instead of maybe putting our attention on consciousness, oneness, communion, or as a lot of you like to say, peace. Anyway, hope to see you in person someday soon. Check out my website at www.dranthonymattis.com or you can check out uh, the Access Consciousness tools at www.accessconscious.com. Bye for now. Hope to see you in person someday soon. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. If this conversation has been a contribution to you, please share, subscribe, or leave a review. For more about Anthony, please come visit dranthonymatters.com. And if you'd like to know more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can go to www.accessconsciousness.com.